Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist and the HLJ Armories dropped off Sentinel's other opening Iron Man release for 2015, The Armorize Iron Man, featuring Adi Granov's Pentagon armor design. This is by no means a companion piece to their re-edit Bleeding Edge Iron Man, it's practically a separate toy line altogether for reasons of both scale and, well, look. You start off with what I like to call Naked Tony. He's got a bit of a weird, kinda emaciated henshin cyborg aesthetic going on, though I'm still undecided on whether or not I think that's a plus or a minus. Even though he's destined to put on a bunch of armor, all of Naked Tony's surfaces are covered in sculpted etchings and detail. And the thing I am really digging right off the bat is how all his red is done with a semi-flat finish, while all his gold is shiny and metallic. The two tones play off each other really well and bring the figure to life. Naked Tony's naked head has a third finish, slightly more textured and flat than the red parts, which works in magnificent tandem with the crisp paint apps and excellent face sculpt. I'm not intimate enough with Adi Granov's artwork to know how closely this resembles his take on Tony Stark, but speaking as a layman outsider, I think it looks sharp as hell. And thanks to an included little tool, you can pose Tony's eyeballs... individually. Uh... well... Disturbing misapplications aside, this is a friggin' cool extra touch, and works quite well provided you take the time to point his eyes in the same direction. Naked Tony's clothes and spare hands are all packaged in one big tray, and there's a lot of stuff. The main gimmick of Armorize is armorizing, so let's... Armorize! A decent variety of attachment methods adhere the armor parts to Naked Tony, from clips, to pegs, to friction tabs, to straight up slip on tube style dress up action. Aside from popping the hands on and off, the only other parts forming you've got to do is de legging Naked Tony from the knees down. Between the hinge and closing bicep pieces and the incredibly clever folding enclosure you put together around the shins, I admit I was a little disappointed to see that I had to dislodge the knees. You can totally leave the Naked Tony head on here for a helmet off look, it's like on the front of the box, but let's swap its tremendously user-friendly keyed peg connection to fully armor Naked Tony up into Armored Tony, also known as Iron Man. I don't know my Iron Man armors very well, but I know what I like, and this looks properly industrialist billionaire badass. The flat red metallic gold thing continues here, albeit with tons more red and a little bit less gold. Armored Tony cuts a mean silhouette with really good aesthetics and mass, despite having a slightly skinny Naked Tony within, and all that panel lining just makes it delicious to look at. There's also a cool clear plastic over sculpted silver approach to the chest light, and the helmet's optics are basically bursting thanks to the heavy black outline around the stark white lenses. It's all so clean and tidy and strong, man. Aside from his fists, Armorized Iron Man also includes a pair of slightly grasping open hands, so he can, like, hold his helmet or touch his chest. And of course, a pair of splayed fingers repulsor blast hands are included, though there aren't any effects parts to finish off action or flight poses. I don't really mind, but it would have been a nice way to round off the accessory count and pump a little more bang for your buck out of this thing. In general, the armor on Armorized Iron Man does not get too far in the way of posability, and this is a Sentinel piece, and I believe T-Rex specifically worked on some of the articulation, so there's some exciting stuff in here, uh, and some other stuff. Starting off with his head, though, uh, it's not on a ball joint, it's on uh, two different hinges. Um, there's one hinge uh, that lets you look up and down, and then that same connection lets you look left and right. Uh, the actual connection to the head is a keyed thing here, so that's kind of cool. Uh, it means that there are very specific things that move uh, to allow for posability on this guy. Uh, there's not very much that's hinky up there. Then down at the base of the neck, there's another hinge, so the entire neck can go forwards and backwards. So that's, that's pretty good for your classic Iron Man flying look. His torso is where a lot of magic happens, because uh, there's a ball joint down here at the waist and another... Uh, joint up here in the ab, and in order to access a lot of that, uh, this happens naturally actually while you're bending it, but if you want you can pull up to click the ball joint there and pull up here a little bit, and now you've got uh, a fairly wonderful level of, like, this kind of thing. Like, he can go that way, he can go up here. I really dig that. Uh, there's a flap here as well that you want to keep on the inside of the cod piece, not on the outside. But uh, that all just moves organically with the look of the armor. I think that's really cool. Um, when you don't have the chest piece on, 
Uh, there's a tad more motion that you can get, but I don't think that you're really missing anything by having the armor on. There's nothing about it that feels like it's fully limited. Just that when you have Naked Tony, there is a little bit more flex in the center of the torso. There's one point of fragility here I want to talk about, uh, at least on mine. Uh, these circular things here can flap around a little bit, you know, for the sake of having the legs go in and out. Uh, but this one, for whatever reason, I've thickened it up a little bit with floor polish, but the nubs that this thing connects to, uh, I, th I think one of them just, like, sheared off or something, or something was mismolded, because this one basically, in some positions, would hold tight, and in others would just fall right out. It still falls out a little bit, because I've only done one coat of floor polish to thicken things up. It's, it's a fully friction connection, but uh, that was a little bit disappointing. The hips are uh, ball joints that work a little bit figure art style in that there's also a central swivel so that you can pull a leg down if you want him to uh, to kick forward and then you have room for his thigh to fit inside the, the space that his hip was in. Um, and that, that's kind of cool. There's also a thigh swivel. The problem with the way that the articulation set up here is that this codpiece uh, belt thing has no bottom. That means that there's a lot more freedom of movement, but very quickly uh, and from underside angles, things can look super messy. And like, you know, when you have this guy on a flight stand and everything, you, you want to keep his legs together and like this. Because if you get things coming out like this and you're looking up there, it looks kind of like, eh, I don't know, man. Uh, but this is also where uh, the, the first case of the armor being really well designed comes into play. Because, like, there's an armor piece over here. There's armor stuff all over here. Uh, this double-jointed knee is completely unhindered. Like... That's really well done. Uh, and I don't feel like Naked Tony has very much uh, extra range on his legs. Like, this is... It's very tight. It's very gripping. And it, uh, it still has lots of cuts and allotment for the possibility to happen and to work. Uh, the ankles are on really nice, tight joints. There's a hinge like this. Uh, there's, a, I believe, a peg connection to allow for some tilt. There is uh, some toe. And, uh, feels really good. Uh, like, this whole central core of the figure, uh, I really like. Coming up to the arms, uh, is where the saddest thing happens. Now, uh, I was already a little bummed out that there was something falling off here, but whatever. The armor, in general, is staying out of the way of posability. Uh, there's a double-jointed uh, elbow here, and this is all extra armor stuff that is staying way out of the way of the posability. It's, it's great. The biceps will hold works as well. Uh, there's a, uh, figure art-style wrist joint where there's a hinge as well as a wrist peg connection. Uh, these hands, though, I've only I've only tested this posability wise a whole lot with the fists so far, but they are pretty ready to fall off if you grab them and pull on them. That means that when you're using this hinge, it's pretty easy to accidentally knock them off, and uh, that's kind of a bummer. But the real bummer are the shoulders! So, let me pull this shoulder off. Alright, so there's Naked Tony's shoulder. It's uh, You can see there's like an inset ball joint. Right? And then there's a hinge here. So uh, those two joints together allow for this great shoulder range until you put the shoulder pad on. So, I'll leave that off actually. So here's how far out that can go, right? But when there's a shoulder pad on, and I'm, I've tried different ways to get this to work, like there's, there's a lip uh, here at the top of the shoulder pad, and I've tried having it over and under the lip of the shoulders of the chest armor. And uh, no matter what I do, this is kind of the best I can do for an outwards swing. If you get this thing so the lip is above the chest armor, you can get it to swing out farther, but while you're doing that, this shoulder piece is falling off of its mounting. And the shoulder piece is a die-cast piece. This happened to me so many times. I've got, uh, between that and scraping against the uh, inside of the chest here, I've got lots of paint chipping that's happened on the ridges of this thing here. You can see a little bit of silver showing through there, and it's, uh, it's a real shame. And I would be kind of just mildly annoyed with this, except that this is Sentinel. And everything else about this armor plays with the posability so well. And then there's this thing where, like, this just slots in using these two tabs. They go into a little a little trail inside here. Uh, so it clips on real well. There's even a little bit of a friction click. But then it, there's no design to allow for the shoulder articulation to work with the shoulder pad on. Uh, if the bulk of this shoulder pad had been a separate hinged assembly separate from the mounting cup inside here, I feel like that would have worked. I mean, that's a proven design sensibility on Fig Arts on, on other toy lines as well. And 
it seems like the whole idea here is, well, you can move it out a bit farther, and then it'll sort of start half sliding off of here. That's great, except that the way it frictions on means it's not half sliding off, it's like building up a kinetic pop, and then it either pops off, or you've moved it up here, you kind of feel a bit of a click, you let go, and then this thing just falls off. Uh, super disappointed with those shoulder pads. Um, doubly so, given the pedigree of who this is coming from. I don't understand uh, how such an oversight could have happened with Sentinel T-Rex working on this thing. And it even comes to the point of trying to move the shoulders forward and backwards. If you do it without holding right onto this shoulder pad while you're doing so, and, you know, bumping stuff a little bit here, like, if I just start moving his shoulder like this, it's now halfway off the mounting. Look, at the end of the day, I have exactly one major problem with the figure. It's the shoulders. I've gone on about it for a while. The question is, does that nullify all the other good qualities this toy has? Grudgingly, and after lengthy conversations with the Empire over on Twitter, I'd have to say it does not. The shoulders are limited, but all the other articulation designs are very well executed. The armor up gimmick is cute, if just slightly complicated and not quite fun enough to want to do over and over again. But it adds a very unique and surprising feature to the figure in that there's a very specific layered mass to the piece in hand all armor on. It's not just heft, it's a very tactile sensation of that heft being a tight layer over another mass underneath, but without most of it getting in the way of each other. Add to that the awesome sculpt and delightful matte red and metallic gold finish, and at the end of the day, I gotta say that Armorize Iron Man's high points outweigh his faults. But I've also gotta say that this is a piece for Iron Man enthusiasts first and foremost. It comes in at an odd 7-inch scale, and is definitely overshadowed by the tour de force that the Bleeding Edge re-edit figure, also released by Sentinel in the same month, appears to be. Albeit at a much different scale. I don't have Bleeding Edge re-edit yet. It's sold out everywhere. I have some regrets. If you're a fan of the character, and particularly the work that Addy Granov did for the character, I'd recommend picking this up, but if you're an Iron Man casual or spectator, there are better places to put your resources, unless you're hardcore into the 7-inch scale. As for the Sentinel fans out there, I don't know, man. Some of their strengths are present here, but I still haven't gotten over the shoulder pads. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope this video has helped give you a better idea of what an Armorize even is. So far, it seems that this is a one-off release, as Sentinel's other upcoming Iron Man pieces have all been labeled under the re-edit line. I'd love for them to take another crack at Armorize, though, if only to take these shoulder pads and freaking conquer them! I know you can do this, guys!